What's up guys, Greg Bear here of Greg's Halfling Garden Channel and today I have a very exciting video for you guys. As you know, I grow produce. I have a produce stand at the bottom of my driveway. You could call myself a micro market gardener probably. I don't have a huge farm. I don't have a tiny garden. I kind of have an in-between garden. It's about 500 square feet plus 18 fruit trees and a few bushes around the property. And the purpose of me growing most of my produce is just to sell it. I do eat a little bit of the green beans here and there, but for the most part, it's all to sell. So, I have a produce stand. It is actually a planting station I got from Tractor Supply four years ago. It's made out of the cheapest, junkiest wood you could ever imagine, and it's about ready to fall apart, especially when I wheeled it up the driveway at the end of last season. It was a mess, it was creaking, the tire went flat, it was just awful. So, what we're gonna do in this video is build a new produce stand. But first, I wanna actually show you the old produce stand, give it one last hurrah on this video, and then we're gonna dismantle it. So, let's go take a look at the old produce stand. Pardon the mess here, I've got wood everywhere for different projects I'm gonna be working on. Come around here to the back of my garage. Kind of a mess back here too. Like I said before, I do scrap metal stuff, so just got stuff piled everywhere back here, an old grill. Here she is, the old produce stand. I'll see if I can find a picture of this thing when it was actually covered in produce during the peak of summer here. But like I said, I got this thing from Tractor Supply. It's very rickety. I don't even know what this wood is. It's probably the cheapest, cheapest, cheapest pine wood you could ever find. Like, you could probably put a screw in by hand, it's so cheap and soft. But what I'm gonna do is take all this stuff that I built off of here. This is one of the folding extensions I put on. I'm gonna put these on the sides of the new produce stand. I'm gonna have to cut them down a little bit, but they'll definitely work good. Give me a little extra space because I plan on growing a lot of tomatoes, doing a lot of packs this year. I'll definitely salvage all the screws I can out of this and probably just burn the thing when I'm done. It's pretty worthless. I mean, I might take the axle I put on here. One of the tires is flat, so I don't know if I'm gonna put too much money into it for that because it's probably just cheaper to buy a whole new tire than buy a freaking tube for one of these. These are only like 10 bucks a piece on sale at Tractor Supply usually. But yeah, that's the old produce stand. All right, let's cut back to construction. Yeah, like I said, it's definitely rickety as heck as you can see. Uh, it's been through two seasons now out there, plus I've had it for four years outside already. I've tried to brace it with two by fours here and there, but the wood is just so bad on it. There's nothing really more I could do on it. So, I've been thinking about this for a while. I used some of the money I actually made from produce last year to buy the wood for the new produce stand. I spent maybe about $60 altogether on wood. I probably bought more than I needed just in case I cut something wrong because I definitely have a history of measuring twice and cutting four times before it's right. I'm not the greatest carpenter and I'm not the greatest at making plans on cutting wood either, but I'll do my best. Definitely don't take any of my advice. This is more of just a how I did it video, not how you should do it video. So with that being said, let's start this video. First thing we're gonna do, go over the materials and tools we're gonna need for this build. Here we go. I got my drill with a Phillips head bit and extension, a small square, a large square, nice coffee can full of wood screws, some awesome 90s looking safety glasses, at least one pen, because I'm probably gonna lose this 10 times before the project's over, uh, measuring tape, nice circular saw, and these earmuffs, which I actually just picked up today at Walmart. I've been searching around for a really good pair of earmuffs. I went on Amazon and I bought the Decibel Defense earmuffs. They were really uncomfortable and they barely fit my ears. They were actually pulling up my ears so hard it gave me a headache. And I got these at Walmart for 10 bucks, the Decibel Defense for 22. So I actually returned those, got these. These things are amazing, they fit really well and of course, these ones are way more adjustable than the Decibel Defense. Way more comfy too. They don't put as much pressure on my head like the inward pressure you get. 
So pretty happy with that. That's just a little plug for these. Find them in the hardware section, $9.97. All right, that covers all the tools. Now we can look at the wood. This is a pretty simple build. Honestly, I don't know how many studs and furring strips I bought now, but it's a lot. I think I got about 10 studs. Two, four, six, and seven strips here. These strips are for the actual shelf itself. I'm gonna build two shelves and then a roof out of these as well. Make it look really pretty. And the studs are of course for all the, pretty much the structure. And then on the front of that as well, I've got this junk piece of wood I found. And what I wanna do, my produce stand by the way is called Give a Hoot Produce. Uh, I could, I guess, rename it to Greg's Halfling Garden Produce Stand or something, but I like the Give a Hoot Produce. I actually have this metal cutout that my mom gave me that says Give a Hoot Produce, and that's where we got the idea from the name at that. So I'm gonna take this big piece of wood, I'm gonna use my projector and project the lettering on it so I can get it nice and centered, marker that out, and either chisel the letters out or use a wood burner on that, make it look really rustic, and then that's gonna be pretty much the face of the stand. And then hopefully, probably put some hooks on the side or something for flowers and I don't know what else, maybe some planter baskets I might start this year, who knows. But I guess that covers everything we need for this project now. So let's go ahead and look at the plans now because I am a really good artist when it comes to plants. As you can see, my drawing skills are top notch, but hopefully you can get the idea from this. Uh, no, it's not super good, but this is the side here, and then we got a nice angle up with strips of wood on the side. This is actually what the shelf will look like. It's a bunch of furring strips for the base with uh, the studs for the bottom here for the frame. And Stud, 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 and actually I'm gonna put a second shelf down below. I don't know if it's just gonna be only access for me or like another shelf to put produce to sell on, but we'll see. I might put a curtain down there. I don't know what I'm gonna do. And then the signage is gonna go right up top here. If you can picture this is the front and not the side weird 3D view, but yeah, it'll say give a hoot produce right there. And what else? I think that's about it. And I'm definitely not good at cutting angles. So once I get to cutting these studs, I'll probably not actually cut the angle permanently until I get them mounted at the right height and then find the angle I want for the roof and then cut the angles on these off first and we'll be good to go. So for now, I'm gonna start with the easy one, building the shelf. It's literally just like 15 pieces of wood, four of them being the studs and the other about 11 being the planks here. So let's do it. Woo, all right. Got the base of the frame done as you can see down here. I also added this cross brace in. I'm probably way over building this because this probably isn't gonna hold more than like 100 pounds of produce, but just to be safe, I mean, it's gonna be exposed to the weather a lot, so maybe this will help any warping once the wood gets wet. I am gonna treat it with something, I just don't know what yet. So, next step, we're gonna take our furring strips here and cut them and throw them right on here. Should be pretty easy. And then after that, we can start building the studs on the side, the actual legs, and go from there. Got all the planks cut now. After I looked at it with it a solid all the way across, I decided to actually take out one board and then space all these boards about half an inch apart. I like this look a lot better. I mean, I pretty much just built a mini pallet is what it looks like, but picture this with the produce all over it. I think it'll look a bit more rustic with the gap in between and it'll help once it rains hard. It, the water's not gonna puddle up on the top. It'll go straight through here. So this is what I'm gonna go with for the design now get all these screwed in place and then we can start screwing the studs on the side and we can really start seeing this thing take shape. Let's do it. Check. 
Check her out. All screwed together. Spaces are nice and even. Just had to do a little trimming with the circular saw on this side because the math just doesn't add up. These are three and a half inches and I did a five inch or half an inch gap in between. So I just had to cut off about a quarter inch on this one side. Otherwise it all went pretty perfect. I'm gonna wait to finish sanding everything till all the end. So for right now, we're gonna take our four studs. This shelf is gonna be at 36 inches on the top. So gonna screw in all four of the legs so we can stand this up, see how it looks. Maybe even get to the angle on the roof tonight. It is about 9.30, so I'm probably gonna have to call it quits soon so I don't piss off my neighbors. So for now, let's get the legs put on. Check this thing out. I got the two back legs put on. I threw this clamp and board on here to the right height just to see how it's gonna stand once it's all done. Height is perfect. I mean, I'm 5'11". This is a perfect height for me to grab stuff from. I have a lot of older ladies that are probably like 5'5", five, five, so this should be just the right height for them as well. Nice eye level almost for everything. And then coming down here, I've got lots of room to put a whole another shelf in. Maybe even put it at a little bit of an angle so it looks really cool. So right now, we're gonna put the next leg in. Luckily, I've got this stud that I cut another piece off of and now it's exactly 72 inches, which is what I need for the front. So we're gonna throw that one on real quick and move on to the left side. Let's do it. All right, all four legs are in. Uh, some of these look a little crooked right now. Once I put the bracing down here and up here, these will all straighten out a little bit more and it'll be a lot more square. But for now, it kind of looks like a rickety old shack, but I can't wait to see when it's done. I think I'm gonna call it quits for today. It's right about 10.30 now. I don't wanna be running the circular saw now. My neighbors are like 20 feet away from my garage, so I don't wanna disrespect them like that. So call it quits for now and tomorrow we're definitely going to cut the angles on the tops of these, get all the bracing in, and probably build the second shelf. Honestly, we'll probably finish it tomorrow. I'm not gonna make you guys wait till tomorrow, of course. We have the magic of video editing, so let's just make it tomorrow right now. Oh, look at that, it's the next day already. Time flies when you're video editing. All right, so I took the liberty of boxing up the bottom because I was sick of looking at the crooked beams and this thing was so flimsy when it was just the studs just screwed right in here. So I wanted to sturdy it up a little bit before I started this next portion of the video. So got that all done. I mean, I might do a little bit more framing down there if I do decide to put the axle on this thing and have it be mobile. But for now, I'm gonna leave that alone. Uh, next step, we'll probably be working on another one of these shelves. I know you guys probably don't want to see me build another shelf, so Let's just cut to me having another whole shelf done. All right, I got the second shelf done. Take a look. I already got it roughly in place. Nothing's drilled in, I just got it clamped in place. I got this one at a little bit of an angle. The plan's gonna be to have a bunch of square baskets on this one. I'll probably just staple them to the actual wood so they don't slide down. Probably throw cucumbers, I don't know what else, large tomatoes and stuff down here, just for a secondary shelf space. Then gonna cover this front with wood that's actually gonna match the spacing on this all the way down and could do the same thing in the back. I actually already cut all the pieces. So I'm gonna take all these pieces, line them up with the wood right here and I have that nice slat pattern in the back too. So right now, just gonna get this shelf all straightened out so it's perfectly level, drill that in, then get all these boards drilled in, then get the front done. Because of course, sadly, I had the eight foot boards and these were 35 and a half. So I do have lots of scraps I'm actually gonna use for the front. So hopefully I'll have enough to finish that off without using a whole nother board and waste another board making all these small pieces. So well, let's do it.
entire lower level done. Tried to match it as close as I could with the distances and everything. A couple of them don't match quite, but I mean, nobody's gonna really tell once this is all covered in produce. So next up, I already kind of set the angle on what I want to do for the roof line and how far I want it to overhang off. This is going to be the last thing I do. For now, I'm actually, I decided I'm going to put in another shelf up here, but this is going to be a half shelf. So I have to frame these two in and then run a board across. And then we're going to have the same slat pattern up here, but it's only going to come out a foot and it's going to be about this high about halfway in between the roof line and this current shelf. So then I can throw a ton of packs of tomatoes up here and then have room for cucumbers, squash, and everything down here. I'm gonna have a ton of room on this thing. Pretty much building it for the fall time when I have a lot of pumpkins and big things on here. So I'll have a lot of room, like on this little shelf up here. I'm gonna be able to put all the Jack B Little pumpkins and smaller pumpkins like that. Check this thing out now. I got the mini shelf put up. It looks freaking awesome. And of course, it'll add some more rigidity to the whole thing here. Take a step back, look at this whole thing. I cannot wait to put some produce on this. All right, next step, we are going to continue this line up here now, all the way to where the roof's gonna meet right here, uh, 60 inches, five feet. And then that's gonna angle up, of course, and have like a eight inch overhang on that side. And of course, the whole roof is gonna be the same slat pattern. Bum, 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 across 10 of those. And that's really about it. I'm still undecided if I'm going to actually finish the sides and use uh, the studs on the sides with a half inch spacing in between. We'll see. This thing probably already weighs over 100 to 150 pounds now, so it's getting up there. I have a really steep driveway, so this is not going to be fun to bring down, but luckily, I'm just going to bring it down once and then bring it back up at the end of the season, so it is what it is. I can always use my tractor and pull it down nice and slow and safe that way, but for now, let's get back to building and doing this back now. All right, a little change of plans. I actually went ahead and framed the whole roof in. I didn't feel like showing this all on camera, trying to figure out these angles to get everything perfect. This took quite a long time. And sadly, this stud is actually twisted a little bit. So there's this ugly gap right here that I, maybe I'll sand and file down to get that straight. But as you can see, whole roof is framed in. I actually cut all the boards for the roof yet. They're not screwed in yet and spaced apart right. But this thing is really coming along now. And I actually have all the boards cut for the back of this now as well. So we'll probably just run a little time lapse of me screwing in these boards and the roof boards. And then we'll be about done. And we can start taking a look at the sides, see if I want to do anything on the sides. I'll probably put a small lip right here. Just want to have like large tomatoes on here. They don't roll off or anything just in case this isn't level when I get to the bottom of the driveway. And that's about that. So let's run that time lapse. Same exact spacing, follow it all the way down to the bottom and lines up with all the spacing on the shelves right there. Also off camera, I put this lip on this shelf and a lip on the front of this one. I might put a lip on the front of this one and this one. I'm not really sure yet. I'm kind of taking a break from it now. 
a little bit sick of working on it. Probably put 15 hours in the last few days working on it. So I have one problem here. This thing is pretty big. So if I throw this at the bottom of my driveway as is, city could probably technically get me for a code violation because they could consider this a structure. So I'm just gonna throw some casters on the bottom of it to show that it is mobile and not permanent. So hopefully they leave me alone. They never said anything last year but I mean, this is quite a bit bigger. The other one's probably about the same height, but this is probably just twice as wide and obviously it looks more like a produce stand. But the other one was kind of just like a, a planting shelf, as you could say, I don't know. This one just looks a lot bigger and could uh, raise some eyebrows from city, but hopefully not. Also got my cash box in here. I don't know where I'm gonna put that yet. Got that done. I think that is everything for construction today. I really don't know if I'm gonna stain this or paint it. I'm definitely not gonna leave it as is since this is like untreated, not pressure treated lumber. If it rains a lot and it gets wet for like a year straight, it's definitely gonna start warping and look like crap, turn all gray and all that. So I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with that as well. But yeah, I'm very happy with this project. I probably have like a hundred bucks in it. And like I said, about 15 hours of labor. Pretty much designed this whole thing from scratch. Most of the structure in the beginning and then kind of winged it as I want here. I'm really, really happy with the result. I'm honestly surprised this thing came out very straight. There's no wobbling at all. I'm actually maybe getting good at carpentry now. If you like this video, definitely give it a like. If you want to stay in the know for all my future uploads, make sure to turn on the notification bell and make sure it's set to notifications on always. And definitely consider subscribing to the Greg's Halfling family and become one of my halflings. And with that said, I hope to see you all next adventure. Greg Bear out.